Thank you. I want to pass on a special thanks to uh, Jamie Campana, our director and editor of that, that piece we just did. Uh, that was just finished very recently, and we shot it for about three days in, uh, in L.A. with the help of the, the Burbank crew, and it all went very well. It was a lot of fun to put that piece together. And I think what... Uh, are we on a on presentation here? Here we go. Um, I think what you can see by that kind of thing is that, is that indeed we are truly at a time of transition. Uh, I gave a short presentation earlier, and my work ranges from, I shoot a lot of resort commercials, a lot of tabletop, all kinds of different work, and, and because the transition now is happening in the cameras, and we're going, sadly, it saddens my heart, we're moving away from film, but into cameras like the Alexa, and I have to say the images are remarkable and there's no reason not to, so that transition is, is in full speed. In the lighting side, I feel like we're just getting there with, with LEDs, and I've been doing a lot of work with Aerie and other companies looking at the LEDs and really picking it apart. And, and one of the big problems is that we haven't really truly duplicated an, H a, 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 uh, an LED Fresnel, and that, that Fresnel, especially the tungsten Fresnel for me, is a favorite light. And so Aerie, thankfully, with the L7, has really put together a beautiful source that we can finally integrate into it. And a lot of what I'm working on right now whether it's either studio news or resort pieces or commercials, a lot of what I'm doing is I'm integrating LEDs into the rest of the equipment. And I was mentioning earlier in a presentation is that I think in a perfect world, people are saying, well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to put together a new studio, and so all I want to do is have all LEDs. And I hear this a lot because I like news sets around the world. And the fact of the matter is it doesn't usually go that way. Um, they're pricey at the moment because they're just coming out. There's a lot of R&D into it. And I think when the networks get a sense of what they're going to drop as far as upfront costs, they go, oh, okay, well, then what we're going to do is we'll give you 12 or 15 of them, and then you can use the rest of our lights. So I'm actually integrating LEDs into a lot of older tungsten instruments, into fluorescence with HMIs, all kinds of different things. So that's been a real test for the instrument, and it's, it's coming out with flying colors so far. In this set, this is a Ketterkohl network down in uh, Bogota, Colombia. There are many, many LEDs integrated in, into the set, in the background walls, and it's used throughout. So it just kind of depends on the different scenario. This is for CCTV China, and this is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I arrived, and they had, I had requested a lot of equipment, and I arrived, and not anything that I had requested was there with me, which was a little, uh, a little frustrating. And what happened is they just sent me 12 what I'll call blasters, just LED blasters, no barn doors, no control, no Fresnels, no Lecos, no nothing. And they said, well, this would be just fine because we're all going LED and we're going green, and uh, this would be better. So what they unfortunately didn't understand is there's a little bit more to lighting than that, as most of you know. I, I, there's a big difference between illumination and lighting. So it took me about eight days, and I finessed a few more instruments out of it, and we ended up making this all work out fine. And that's a, actually a very small set. The header, the red header at the top, touches my hair when I walked under it. So it, it's kind of like a miniature set that looks big on camera. But it did work, and the pictures did turn out great. It just took a little bit of, of finessing, and that... that the, what is missing from so many of the LED products in my mind is that ability to create a sharp shadow. And that's what the, for me, the L7 has really brought in. There are some brand new uh, LED Lecos, and those are just coming out as well, but I don't trust the color as much. I don't cut, trust what I'm getting out of it as much. And this light, I'm really feeling very confident going into different jobs. This is in Romania, and the look on the talent for me is always number one, and then the background of the set is eye candy just as a, as a setting for the talent. But you've got to get the great look on the talent. So I'm finally walking into sets like this and feeling very confident that I can, I can bring these instruments in and know what I'm going to get on camera. This is a side-by-side -side that I did for the FedEx Corporation. So you can see there's the L7, the Lowcaster is down below. I've got Kino Flows, I've got light panels. And we did some very aggressive side-by-side -side with African-American skin tones, Caucasians, color charts. And everybody kind of gravitated toward the L7 at the end of the day as far as a hard source. And it's just because they've really, truly got that Fresnel characteristic down pat. This is a news set in Dallas, Texas for NBC, and the graphics at the very front of the news desk down below, I think this is a pointer as well, this is an actual graphic backlit by a couple of fluorescent tubes, and they said, we want this look back here. And these are just clear plex with a graphic built onto them with no color at all. So what we did is we installed LEDs in a very different style to, uh, to match that same look. So LEDs are being used now on talent and in a great deal on set, especially for network news. So you can see the rows I have at top and bottom here, and I'm just dialing in different shades of blue and teal and green to end up getting that same match. 
Now, talking again about working with integration, this is for EA Sports. This is Tim Brown, a Heisman winner. And this was the probably eighth setup that we did for this big shoot. And pretty much the truck was empty. Uh, and I'm sure you've all been there as well. And I'm down to my last gear. So I've got some KinoFlow four banks through some 216 diffusion as is key. I've got another small source behind it on the left bouncing into the white card. I've got this bouncing off the wall. I used a mirror for a kick. And then I've got, a, uh, I've got an airy low caster right up in here at the top. And that's my backlight. And I could dial in the intensity, the color, everything I needed just to get this little cut on the back of Tim here. So it really is truly uh, the kinds of sources that you can integrate into any type of shoot. And this is what keeps happening to me. This is another setup from that same shoot for EA Sports. And they wanted kind of a hyper press conference look for the different athletes to come out. And I've actually have KinoFlow celebs as my soft lights up here. And I've got uh, an Ariel 7, you can see, and we've got some black wrap on it for a hot spot right in here. The Heisman's down in here, and I lit that with a low caster so I can manipulate the color of the bronze to come out and look as it should, as the Heisman people wanted it to look on camera. So it's, it's really finally gotten to a point, as I was saying, where I feel confident walking into, the, into a shoot, especially with the airy fixtures, where I know I can do a new set, I can do a green screen, it doesn't matter to me anymore. I feel just as if it's working with any other fixture. The big advantage is if I want to change colors, I don't have to gel and I can manipulate minor plus or minus green for hues and then also it's fully dimmable. So it's, it's got a, a number of giant advantages over traditional tungsten Fresnels or daylight HMI Fresnels and that for me is something I'm getting very comfortable with. I also shoot a lot of documentaries, and I was over in France shooting wine stuff uh, several months ago, and I brought a very small light kit. You can see I have two low casters here, and we got thrown into a situation where I was working with some very high-end chefs over there, and they wanted some food shots, which I really didn't feel we were prepared for. But regardless, I had to move forward. So with a couple of low casters, we ended up getting some very nice shots. We had some pastry chefs and different kinds of shots, and just with a couple of instruments, we ended up getting a very nice look, and I just grabbed these with my phone off the camera just to see that even with these small instruments, if you have kind of an idea what you're doing with lighting, and which is that's something I've been pushing for a long time, is for people to learn about the light and not just about a camera. And if you do have a sense of what you're doing, it kind of you can kind of work with about anything. So we're generating nice images with all kinds of these LED instruments now. This is from the, uh, the video that you just watched, and you can see we're in here with the shrimp shot that was a lot of fun to put together. And these are just stills from that shoot as well of us working with these different instruments. And that entire production was lit with L7s, and uh, it was fun just to work only with those lights and light that entire production. So really, I have very com few complaints moving forward now. We've got, we've got the latest in high tech as far as cameras, and now finally the lighting industry has followed up, and we've got some LED lights that we feel comfortable and confident moving ahead, regardless of the size of the job, whether it's, it's like I said, if it's network news, if it's documentary on location because of the small power draw, that's an enormous advantage. So it just goes on and on to show that these lights are, are they're there. It's time now for us to integrate these into our work, and I feel like I could work with any of my clients CNN, I just did a job down in Miami, the same kind of thing. So we're moving ahead on, on big jobs and using these lights in all the different kinds of locations and having no problems anymore. Again, the color manipulation for me is a giant one. Uh, we tire of putting gels on lights and how, how much light it eats up and having to change the gels out when they're burned out, etc. So I'm going to wrap this presentation up. We'll obviously be around for, uh, for questions or answers later, and I think we're going to move on and see some terrific footage uh, from a gentleman I think you, you may know. So uh, I'm going to pass the mic back. Thank you very much for your time. And see you. Thank you.